So, hi, good morning, welcome to our session, um, Android Goes Reading. Um, so what is it all about? Um, it's about e-readers, I hope, obviously. Uh, these strange little devices only built for reading books, the thing from the last century, but still uh, very useful. First question, who of you has an e-reader already? Oh, more than I expected. Um, but anyways, it's cool because several people don't have uh, e-readers so far. You're prepared to buy our Tolino e-reader. Um, don't worry, I don't want to sell gadgets here, but this is a new e-reader um, built from um, Deutsche Telekom for all the German booksellers. And what is cool about it's open, so it's built based on Android, and you can get easy content in and out, not as an, uh, an Amazon device. But anyways, it's not about this product. Um, before I start with the technical stuff, or just a brief overview about the history of our project. Um, we started early, uh, no, end of 2011 um, with talking with uh, the booksellers, Hogendobel, Thalia, Weltbild, and so forth about a joint venture. Why? Uh, because we uh, were working since several years on an e-publishing platform for e-books. Um, but to be honest, we weren't very successful as Deutsche Telekom because, of course, uh, nobody expects us to sell books. Nobody comes to Telekom to buy books. Um, but we had a nice platform. On the other hand, the um, big booksellers, they had big brands, uh, good marketing, but they don't have uh, a good platform. They had problems with their costs, technology, and so forth. And of course, there were uh, potentials to make something nice together. Then we had uh, several months of negotiations, and so forth, and so forth. Uh, and somewhere in um, 2012, they told us, yeah, you have a nice platform, but you miss an e-reader, so we might go with a US company called Barnes & Noble, who has everything as you, a good ecosystem, and an e-reader. Deutsche Telekom, you might be out. And then the pitch started, we had three weeks. We said, okay, we like the competition. In three weeks, we will build you an e-reader. Um, and then the trouble starts, and maybe some success. Uh, we had three weeks to build um, from our source Android app, from the stores, a special um, version for the e-reader. We had to go into the NDK and so forth and so forth. Some guys will explain later on. Um, six months later, we had a stable version in the market, uh, and we launched the product in Cebit. Um, when I say we, who are we? Um, I'm responsible for Mobile Solutions. It's a, a big team of mobile developers at Deutsche Telekom. Um, we are already around 50 developers right now. We want to grow till September. Um, maybe we will double till then if we find some hungry and uh, creative people. So you're very welcome. If you're looking for, for some, some, some nice work to do at the Deutsche Telekom booth later on, just uh, come to me. We can talk about this. And maybe one more thing, as uh, the Tolino, Tolino is based on Android and open, I'm very, you're very welcome to provide your apps so we can integrate it there, secondary apps, uh, which could run on uh, an e-reader. Um, can also come to me and the best app will get some money. We will find out a, a good way there. Um, so now I would like to uh, get the, my, 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 my developers on the stage. First of all, Michael, who is one of my internal rock stars, a great developer, working on Android since five years. And later on, uh, Dominic will follow from the company Innovex, who helped us a lot to break all the NDK stuff. Thanks for the moment. Okay, um, hello, my name is Michael Krumling and I'm a developer from Deutsche Telekom. And today I want to give you a short overview uh, about the Android development of the Tolino Reader application. 
And for that, I prepared some topics. Um, so uh, first of all, I want to give you uh, an overview about the uh, preconditions uh, we started with into the project and which challenges we had to handle. And afterwards, I want to show you some of the uh, challenges. Um, for example, the uh, clean drawing, which means the reduction of ghosting, uh, what it means to have no animations on Android, and what it means if there's no settings app coming with Android. And lastly, uh, I want to show you some challenges the, also the tester had uh, when we developed the Tolino. Okay, so um, when we start developing the uh, Tolino Reader application, we are already had um, developed and released the uh, PagePlace Reader application to the Play Store. Um, this is an Android application which already supports all smartphones and tablets. And even if it's not supports the e-ink device, we took the uh, application code as base for the development. So related to the new device, uh, we got some new um, preconditions for development. Uh, first of all, um, and which is a pretty nice one, uh, we had no device fragmentation because we are only developing for one device. And yeah, so we only had to um, support one display size and one resolution. Uh, with Android 2.33, uh, we only had to support uh, one Android version, and this is also a pretty nice uh, thing. Furthermore, um, there were no device specifics, uh, which normally comes from OS changes by the device producers or um, the different behavior of uh, different devices. Another positive fact was that we had, as an application, we had unlimited rights into the, uh, inside of the system. Um, so that means that, for example, uh, we could use any permissions uh, we want to use uh, without limitations by the user impression inside of the Play Store. Um, we implemented against a less restricted SDK, Android SDK, um, with access to functions that you normally are not seeing. And we also uh, could sign our application with the um, system key and install it as a system application. And through that, we get um, uh, some additional rights, um, which are more intrasystem functionalities. Okay, but. Um, with the uh, change preconditions, we also had to handle new challenges. So uh, on the one hand, we had some challenges coming with the hardware. So uh, because we are talking about a device with an e-ink display, which means we have no colors, uh, we draw in only 16 gray shades, and uh, we have a frame rate of only four frames per second. Uh, in addition to that, we had the problem of ghosting, uh, which is kind of visible leavings uh, when you draw on the display. Further on, um, we had some changed performance characteristics with the hardware. For example, um, there was a bad uh, processor performance, so we need to uh, optimize some parts of the, of the application, uh, like the rendering of documents, so that the reading is more fast. <clears throat> Also, the uh, limitation of keys was another problem with the Tolino. So uh, we only have the back key on the device, uh, a device on-off switch, and a light on-off switch. Uh, and so, for example, we had to implement an extended handling of the back button to, um, yeah, to implement all use cases. 
And lastly, we had the uh, demand of seven weeks of um, battery lifetime. And this forces us to uh, use um, different functionalities like uh, the Wi-Fi or the drawing in, a, in the most efficient and rarely way we could. Yeah, um, the changed um, system environment also carries that the application, the Tolino application, uh, was the only application on the device. So this means that the, that the application also has to be the home screen. And um, it also has to um, replace the settings app for the most important settings. And in addition, it also needs to handle and react on all important system events itself. Okay, um, one of the biggest problems when you work with an uh, e-ink device is the ghosting. Uh, ghosting means that you have um, visible leavings uh, of old pictures when you want to draw a new picture on the display. So especially there are problems occurring uh, when you switch between screens, uh, when you use dialogues, and in our case, uh, when you browse inside of a book and you have a lot of page turnings. Uh, another problem are the um, time delays of drawing, which are forced by Android as a middleman between the application and the uh, direct display control. So, uh, to solve these problems, uh, we extend the Android SDK with some um, nice functionalities uh, to control the display. Um, this includes, uh, first of all, um, uh, one, um, yeah, one way to, to draw directly on the display without, Andro without using Android as a middleman. And secondly, we implemented a uh, refresh of the display, which means it's a kind of cleaning the screen. Uh, the functionality of a refresh is always a process of uh, drawing the whole screen in white, uh, then drawing the whole screen in black, and after that you draw the actual picture on the screen. The refresh uh, is good to reduce the visible leavings, uh, but on the other hand it causes the impression of flickering of the screen. So when we were looking for a solution um, to, um, for the ghosting problem, uh, we had to find the best position inside of a triangle um, of problems, uh, which, is, which is composed of um, the speed of drawing, um, the strength of visible leavings, and the impression of flickering. So our final solution, um, or for, for our final solution, we created uh, a customized view which uh, managed all the refresh handling for the application. And this view was used as base container in every activity. So, um, to, uh, for example, for a screen switch, uh, it performs multiple steps to um, make a clean drawing possible. And for that, uh, there's a first step, or in the first step, uh, one activity says, I want to finish. So it notifies the view about that, and the view reacts and draw the whole screen in white. Um, in the second step, another activity wants to come up and also notifies the view about that. And the view reacts again and makes a complete or a full refresh of the whole screen to uh, provide a clean ground for drawing. And not until then, uh, it draws the actual image uh, of the activity. Okay. Um, yeah, to improve the uh, clean drawing and to present content on the e-ink display in a, in a good way, uh, we also had to remove all animations from the application and as well uh, from Android. So one thing we had to do was to develop a custom view uh, which we use instead of the standard list view and grid view. 
And therefore, we replaced the animated scrolling with a paging mechanism. In, addi in addition, um, we did a lot of customization to the web, sh uh, web shop. So uh, the scrolling needs of the website has to be removed and we add some uh, nice functionality to an interface so that the website could directly control the display. Uh, for example, for a refresh or something like that. And another thing we had to do was to remove all 2D and 3D animations from the application we used as base, so from the page place reader application. Uh, for example, the 3D um, page turning effect from the reader. Okay, um, yeah. So uh, the fact that Android is not optimized for e-ink devices and uh, e-ink displays um, involves that, we, uh, that the settings app um, could not be visible on the device. And so we had to integrate um, the most important settings directly into the Tolino application. First of all, we have the Wi-Fi settings. So uh, we took the um, <clears throat> implementation from the Android source code and we did a lot of customization on that uh, regarding the UI. Uh, we also implement an extended event handling and we add, uh, with the help of the Whisper protocol, um, an automatic uh, connection to the hotspots of Deutsche Telekom. Another thing we integrated is the time settings. So this includes the manual setting by the user and the automatically setting of time uh, through a connection to time servers. And setting the system time is also one good example of a functionality uh, for which you need to be a system app. So this is kind of, yeah, unnormal <laughs> that an application can set the system time. Other examples of settings we integrate into the application are the brightness setting to control the front light of the device, uh, the device timeout delays, the uh, battery management, and the factory reset for which we uh, could reuse the functionality inside of the settings application. Uh, one functionality we had to fully re-implement is the system update um, management. So this includes the update check uh, on our server, um, the download of the, uh, the update, and the uh, start of the installation process through um, forcing a reboot. The actual installation and the recovery mechanism uh, was made on kernel level in that case. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, the internal and external storage uh, management. We also had to integrate into the application. Um, for example, this includes uh, the management of the SD card, um, the um, handling of the USB connection, and we implement a new uh, scan mechanism to find new content. Okay, uh, finally I want to talk a little bit about testing. So uh, besides the normal application tests and the integration tests with the back end, the tester also had to um, yeah, handle new challenges uh, like um, a lot of investigations and benchmarks. So yeah, for example, um, they had to do um, a lot of current measurements um, directly on the device. So for example, at runtime or on sleep mode or when uh, Wi-Fi is using. And so they uh, should ensure that the battery lifetime is as good as possible. 
Another thing are the uh, performance benchmarks and some comparisons with other products. So, uh, for example, uh, we had to compare the um, time for a page turn or the time for screen creation uh, with other products like the Amazon Kindle. And because of that, we had to do a lot of optimizations uh, to get the best result. Yeah, and finally, one of uh, one good example um, for a specific investigation is also um, the current measurement of uh, over 10,000 page turns uh, in the reader. So it's kind of hard to uh, simulate uh, such a lot, uh, such a lot of page turns, and the tester had to find new ways to do that. And so I want to finish my part of the uh, presentation with a little uh, video. So what you see is the Manikineko. It's called Manikineko, and you see it's um, yeah, it's a it's a good tester. It's the best tester we had over at <laughs> Telecom, <laughs> and he's cheap. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Michael, thank you, and um, thanks for coming, everyone. My name is Dominic. I will walk you through the final part of the presentation, um, and I will be rather quick looking at the watch. Um, I work for a company called Innovex, um, and we do, beside a lot of other things, um, customization on the Android system level. Um, this project is a good example for this, um, where you need to tweak and twist the Android system in several ways in order to make it run on your particular hardware. So. Um, some, some ideas or some insights regarding system development. Um, when you do system development, you have, I would say, fun and pain at the same time. And it's quite different from application development. Um, for this project, for example, when you pull out the repository, you have to deal with roughly seven gigabyte of source and binaries, um, which is quite, quite huge. And um, all this leads up to compile times, um, which can end up in several hours. Um, even though you can bring it down to roughly 45 minutes when you have a, a reasonable good machine. On top of those uh, compile times, you usually deal with um, what I call deployment times, um, which are 5 to 10 minutes, which means once you have your images compiled, you need to get it onto the device, right? Um, either via fast boot protocol, or um, in our cases, we could also um, copy it to the SD card and boot directly from the SD card. Anyway, with such turnaround times, you have to plan your work uh, really good because uh, if you do such a, a small little mistake in one line, it can easily cost you an hour to find it out and to start over again. Um, what else? One thing with system development is also you have really rare test procedures. And if you do things wrong, often they compile, but they fail at runtime. So you need to go through all this process in order to find out that you made a small little mistake which let the whole Android system completely fall apart. So the message um, from my side is the cool part of uh, system development is yes, you can change everything, but maybe you shouldn't. Because um, sometimes you will have, and I can promise you, you will have unforeseen um, things falling apart when you do stuff. Um, we did a lot of things on the system. With this project, I will show you two things in detail, um, which is the first uh, thing is boot time optimization and uh, memory management. And downsizing and boot time optimization, so it, the, the target was that the device should boot faster. And um, altogether, we brought it down to boot in only 50% of the time that it needed originally. If you want to optimize the boot process, you should at least know what you are optimizing. So I will quickly walk you through the typical Android boot process, which starts usually with the CPU reading from a fixed address and then firing up the boot loader. In our case, it's U-boot. Um, U-boot usually then um, initializes the kernel, and the kernel um, 
runs a lot of small things like the basic drivers and then starts the init process. Init process in Android is a kind of different, as you know, from um, the Linux desktop init. Um, in Android, it has a lot more responsibility than on classical desktop systems. So after that, the init process um, initializes um, the service manager. The service manager you can think of as a kind of a registry. Um, from Android, every system service registers itself in the service manager. It also spawns Zygote. Zygote is the first Delvic VM which comes to life on Android and is, so to say, the parent or the father of all um, subsequent Delvic VMs. It also kicks out several native demons like the Dbus daemon and the Volt daemon and some other things. And it also kicks the boot animation. Going from there, the Zygote itself spawns the system server, a quite important process. The system server is, so to say, the umbrella application for all system services, um, like the package manager, activity manager, and power manager, and there are several others. And once all this is initialized, finally, the activity manager starts the launcher and fires the boot completed intent. And this is more or less, in a nutshell, very quickly, the whole Android boot process. And if you want to optimize it, you need to measure the times, how long each step takes. Um, there's a quite famous tool for that, very known in the Linux community, and it also works with some modifications on Android. This is Bootchart. Bootchart helps you analyze the boot process and helps you to understand which processes takes um, how much time. This is a boot chart um, from uh, an early Tolino prototype, and um, yeah, it measures from the beginning of the init process. So the things you might miss is the bootloader and the kernel, but honestly, there are really few um, opportunities to optimize um, in that areas. And you get a list of processes, and they are started one after the other, and you can see how much um, CPU and disk I/O consumption is done by those processes. I don't want to go into details because you need to do this on an individual basis anyhow, right? It is dependent to your hardware, to your specific Android version, and to your processes. I can just tell you what we found. For the Tolino system, we took optimizations, um, or we, we did optimizations uh, in the area of demons, so we killed some demons that we didn't uh, need. For example, the Bluetooth uh, demon, the device doesn't have a Bluetooth chip. Um, when you kill the Bluetooth daemon, you can kill the Dbus daemon on Android because it's just needed for that. Um, and then within the system server, we did some optimizations regarding the um, subsequent services. In particular, we found out that the package manager um, takes quite a long time to boot. And when you look into the source code and when you um, put in some, some debug lines, um, we at least figured out that it, uh, the problem is um, parsing of the APKs. So the package manager usually look into each and every APK at boot time to figure out um, which manifest is in and is the DEX optimization already run and that can take ages. Um, in our case, uh, we removed some things on the package manager and we killed a lot of APKs on the system and that brought the boot time significantly down. So we are already running out of time, therefore I will only go very quick, very, very quick, into the um, complex topic of power management. Um, power management on Android is usually a very simple thing, because Android is a lazy guy. The Android kernel is as itself as designed as it sleeps as long as it could. So compared to the desktop world, the Android kernel always goes to sleep. And you need to hold active wake locks or wake it up in order to prevent it from sleep. Right, the classical desktop um, Linux kernel, you need to trigger it to go to sleep. So if you have problems with battery management on Android, you should investigate first of all, does the system sleep and how long does it sleep? And the second thing is um, how, how much um, battery consumption you have on, on LCD uh, displays um, and on touch screens. In our case, we don't have an LCD display. The e-ink display itself is very power saving. Um, we could also quickly figure out that we didn't have a problem with the touch sensor. The touch sensor also went to sleep. In our uh, case, the problem was that the system, the CPU, didn't go to sleep. And how do you measure that? There are basically two ways to find out how long your system go into suspend mode. Um, I, in the matter of time, I don't want to go into details, but you can read some files from the file system, which basically prints out your CPU states on which frequency they are, and you can add those numbers 
and subtract it from the uptime of the system and um, then you will get the deep sleep time of the system at the end of the day, which was nearly zero in our case. So why, why does this lazy Android guy, yeah, why, does, why does it, uh, doesn't it sleep? At the end of the day, if you want to figure it out, you need to dig into the, um, the kernel. Um, or, in our case, we were lucky enough to find the bug um, on, with, a, um, with a tool called um, Dumpsys Battery Info. What it does is it queries the power manager. And the result is that the power manager prints out all wake logs. Wake logs held on application level, on Java level, as well as wake logs held on the kernel level. And we wrote a little parser for this in order to extract all those numbers. The whole dump is like 10 times that much. And um, we figured out that at the end of the day, in our case, it was the um, Wi-Fi wi driver. The driver, it holds a wake log for, um, I think, scanning for new um, um, Wi-Fi signals, and it didn't release the, trial, um, the wake log probably, therefore the device didn't go to sleep. So if you have uh, any kind of low-level power consumption problems, take a look at the output of this format, and you can at least really get really some good details. I yeah, was very quick, but I think um, we are already out of time, therefore I would like to thank you for coming, thanks for your attention, and Markus, do we still have some time for questions left? I think so. Okay, then I will open up the, yeah, the question.